Hi, welcome back. It's been a minute since I recorded, so it feels good to want to do it and um, tell myself, like, who cares what people say? Just do it because you're supposed to do it. <laughs> and um, we're in Mark 14, Matthew, Mark, Luke. So Mark is before Luke. I had somebody leave me a weird comment, like, I'm assuming that everybody believes in God and that I'm, like, putting it down people's throat. I don't do that. I don't know where that comes from. I invite us to read together. And then if you're wanting to read more and learn more, then that that's what I'm trying to do here is just read together and maybe plant the seed. And then if you go off on your own, then that's even better. But I don't, I don't mean to assume anything. I know that we're in a big world and a lot of people worship different gods and different religions and I'm not saying anything about them I'm just talking about me and what I believe I don't want to interject what others believe into this and and think I know what is true and what is a lie like I I'm going off of faith and I'm gonna uh, keep reading with a um, calling it a Christian background non-denominational and I feel that that's important to say because uh, I don't want people to think that I'm on here being a spiritualist or uh, claiming to know any religion claiming to say that one religion is better than the other no i believe in god the son and the holy ghost i believe that he died for our sins on the cross descended to hell paid the most awful debt for us for our sins to be paid rose to heaven and that he's coming back again and he rose after three days he rose the disciples saw him and then before he left um I think he did that with the disciples to reinforce the truth, like the truth of, of him, the Holy um, holy One, the Christ, um, Son of, of God coming to earth to save a fallen people. That's what I believe. And if you don't, I'm, I understand. That's why free will is there. God gave us free will. So who am I to, to take away something that God is giving us? Free will. He doesn't make us accept Jesus as the one, the way, and the life. It's up to every one of us to do that on our own. So um, with that being said, let's just pray a quick prayer, a blessing, and then dive into 14. It's a little bit long, but it's a good one. Okay. Heavenly Father, we are grateful, grateful to stop everything we are doing to dive in your word. It's a busy world. Everybody's moving. There's so many distractions. There's so many priorities, Father God. But I pray that you help us make you a priority in our day. Forgive me for not, for not doing so this week. For falling into my carnal ways and my mental health and letting things distract me, depress me, make me feel unworthy of your word. I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me for my laziness. Bless the viewer wherever they are. May they bring anything that's hurting them, troubling their heart, or an obstacle in their life. May they bring it to you right now and put it at your foot, Father. At your feet of the throne, all is possible in prayer. I pray that we keep hope and faith and that we don't that we don't listen to those that are unbelievers who who would say falsely that we don't know what we're talking about. Let us hang on to truth and be confident that we do know because you said it and it is in your word. And I thank you for that. May you bless this time with you. May we receive a message. May you steady our hearts and minds so that we can be better listeners, learn more, and closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, my friend is leaving San Diego, and we're going to go do karaoke. So that's why it's a little, I'm a little bit different here. I don't really want to go. <laughs> I want to stay home, watch TV in my PJs. I'm an introvert big time. I isolated and I took that self-healing to heart. Like, <laughs> and I think um, I screen too many calls and I say no too many times that tonight because she's leaving us. Um, her name's Starlight, bless her and her daughters. They're moving. So I'm gonna go and hang out with them for a while. Okay, so 14, the plot to kill Jesus. After two days, it was the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by trickery and put him to death. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar of the people. They knew if they tried to um, trap Jesus in front of all the people that there would be a mob of, of, of protesters, if you will, the anointing at Bethany. 
And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, Why was the fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always. And whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, you do not have always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. It took a lot of faith for her to go during this dinner where Jesus is sitting and to anoint him with oil. And he's recognizing that she's taking advantage of the fact that she has the living God in her presence and that she can do this one thing to show her um, worshiping, her submitting to him and worshiping him and uh, serving him. At like when we wash our feet you will and he even says takes it further and says that he's she's preparing her she's preparing him for burial because of the sacrifice that's coming so he's not keeping anything to himself at this point and i i think that's good to mention judas agrees to betray jesus then jesus iscariot one of the twelve went to the chief priest to betray him to them and when they heard it they were glad and promised to give him money so he sought how he might conveniently betray him judas one of the disciples goes out to betray jesus he goes out of his way it wasn't just a happening he thought it through it was premeditated now on the first day of unleavened bread when they killed the passover lamb his disciples said to him where do you want us to go and prepare that you may eat the passover so where should this feast take place and he sent out two of his disciples and said to them go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water follow him wherever he goes wherever he goes in say to the master of the house the teacher says where is the guest room in which i may eat the passover with my disciples then he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared there make ready for us so he's um, prophesying that there will be somebody that they can ask for the room to uh, have the passover feast he tells them what to say they they go into the home of this person and this person agrees and so that's where the passover will be held and I'm not trying to talk too much. I just, there's a lot going on. And so I like to reiterate for myself to, to put it to memory. Okay, uh, 16. So his disciples went out and came into the city and found it just as he had said to them. And they prepared the Passover. In the evening, he came with the 12. Now, as they sat and ate, Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you who eats with me will betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and to say to him, one by one, is it I? And the another said, is it I? He answered and said to them, it is one of the 12 who dips with me in this in the dish. The son of man indeed goes just as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had never been born. He will pay the, the cost for uh, betraying um, Jesus. Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. I like this part. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. I don't know. It doesn't sound the way it is written, the gospel of Matthew and Mark. It doesn't tell how the disciples respond. Like, how are they responding? Are they crying? Are they in agreement? Are they bewildered, confused? Like, bread, body, blood, wine. What is he talking about? But he's been telling them what is to come. And that he will be the living sacrifice. So, I, I'm just curious. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. Another person that betrays him is Peter. So we got Judas and Peter. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. So he's saying when they strike him, when they go after him, the sheep will scatter. Peter said to him, Even if all are made to stumble, yet I will not be. 
Jesus said to him, As surely I say to you that today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he spoke more vehemently, If I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said, Likewise. They don't think that they're capable of doing that, which intentions are always good. But in the heat of battle, in the heat of the moment, in the heat of something going on in our life, we never know how we're going to respond. Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. Watch, take watch as I go and pray about what is about to happen. May I, you know how you just have to go for a walk when something terrible has happened, when you've lost somebody? Your heart is just so raw the, of emotions I can't imagine. He went a little further and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but you will. So he's saying, Father, please, if there is any other way, please let it be. But, Father, your will be done and not my own. Even in his pain, even if he's scared, even if he knows it's going to be torture, he says, let, the, let his father's will be done. Then he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter the temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy and they did not know what to answer him. Then he came the third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. They're near. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude, with swords and clubs, came from the chief's priests and the scribes and the elders. Now his betrayer has given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away safely. Judas as soon as he had come immediately, he went up to him and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. Awful. Then they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of those who stood by drew a sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off the, his ear. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. He's saying, why would you come at me like I'm a robber, like I'm a criminal? I will go. And um, they didn't have to show up that way with swords and clubs. So it's like enough. The will, um, the scriptures must be fulfilled. A young man please naked. Now this part I, I never heard before. 51. Now a certain young man followed him, having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body. And the young man laid hold of him and said, and... He left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. I want to say people, bystanders, know who he is. There are believers watching. They're fearful. They don't know what to do at this point. Um, I think that's what happened here. I think in his haste of what is going on, he flees naked and leaves his sheep there. Like it, it, There's so much going on and it's like, um, it's just an unbelievable sight, I imagine. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes. But Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. Peter was behind a little bit. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. He's with other people around a fire. Now the chief priests and all the council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. Not agree. What they said did not be proven as true. Then some rose up and bore false witnesses. They lied against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy the temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But not even then did their testimony agree. It proved to be false. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? But he kept silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of Blessed? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. 
That was a short answer, but powerful. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? So no testimonies were what they used to um, hang him. It was that he blasphemed and said he was Christ. And um, so this angered them, the high priest and, and the council and the leaders, and they all condemned him to be deserving of death. Then some began to spit on him and to blindfold him and to beat him and to say to him, prophesy. And the officers struck him with the palms of their hands, hateful, a mob of hateful people ready to just crucify him. And it, it's starting here. Peter denies Jesus and weeps. Now, as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, you also were with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are saying. And he went out on the porch, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him again and began to say to those who stood by, This is one of them. But he denied it again, twice. And a little later, those who stood by said to Peter again, Surely you are, the one, you are one of them, for you are Galilean, and your speech shows it. Then he began to curse and swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. A second time the rooster crowed. Then Peter called to mind the word that Jesus had said to him, came to him what Jesus had said, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And when he thought about it, he wept. I would be devastated if I were Peter. I would be heartbroken and, and scared if I was a disciple and this was going on, but we don't know what, what's going on with them um, yet. Uh, what a powerful message. I pray that, as always, you are blessed. Take care of yourself. Have a good weekend. God bless you. Bye.